أسلم تسلم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers, sisters, elders and youngsters One of the most sought after quality and outcome That each and every one of us are pursuing in life in one stage or another Is the quality or the ability to feel empowered A person that feels helpless and powerless becomes very vulnerable Where the slightest winds or the slightest shift in their life Makes them feel as if the entire home is falling down where a slight change in a situation makes him feel like there's no way out. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a hypocrite in the Quran. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ هَلُوعَ إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعَ That a munafiq is such because they're not empowered and neither do they feel empowered. They're always restless and they always feel like the world is turning out against them. The sense of empowerment enables a person to work through difficulties enables a person to feel strong even though their complete structure is shattered or their infrastructure is torn apart but they feel empowered and normally a person's empowerment can come from those things that they truly value in life if a person values wealth the presence of wealth makes him feel empowered that as long as I have wealth with me nobody can take anything from me for others their empowerment may come from their affiliations that because I work in so-and-so sector, in so-and-so company, as long as I have this, no one can harm me of anything. However, my dear friends, we see in our beautiful tradition that empowerment truly comes from the greatest blessing that Allah has embodied us with, which is Iman. That regardless of how difficult it has become for the people that are being killed in this genocide in Gaza, Regardless of how difficult it has become for the refugees and the orphans in Jordan and in Syria and in Kashmir, but quite specifically in Palestine, yet we see the response of Alhamdulillah and we're sometimes caught off guard. Is that real? How is someone so broken yet so intact? How is someone's heart torn into pieces but their mind and body is in complete control? How has it not that their emotions has overwhelmed their rationale? How has it not that the situation has confined them to become paralyzed? And the response is because that which they value the most is still intact. And the moment we're able to keep intact that which we value the most, we will always feel empowered. There is a reason why in the middle of the desert of Mecca, where Bilal عنه, he is being tormented, prosecuted and persecuted in front of the entirety of Mecca, embarrassed, humiliated, where the world around him sees him to be this person who doesn't have enough to buy himself out the slave. Is in nobody's book someone that is honorable. But yet, in those moments of difficulty, in those moments of torment, the power of his heart has not been confined because of the state that he is in. A believer does not pursue a space. A believer pursues a state. The state will always be more valuable in the eyes of Allah than the space. There are many people who fill the space of contentment. But the state of their heart is filled in anguish. And there are many who fill the space of brokenness, poverty, difficulty. But the state of their heart and their mind and their iman is as upright as anyone else's because they pursue the state. Filling the space stabilizes us. But filling the state is what empowers us. There were people who prayed next to the Prophet of Allah in Madinah al Munawwara. They stood next to him. They walked with him. They said labbaik to him. The space that they filled was Something that is worthy of having envy of. But the state of their heart was filled with hypocrisy. The space will never supplement the state. Will never substitute the state. In the middle of this scene unfolding day in and day out, where Umayyah ibn Khalf is torturing Bilal, he still finds the power within to say, Ahad, Ahad, I claim that Allah is one. I claim that Allah is one. How is it so that at times we feel like we are so broken 
that presenting ourselves as believers becomes a secondary thought. It's not because we are weak. It's simply because empowerment for us has come from something else. Empowerment only comes from that which we value the most. How is it so that these Palestinian families or these families in Gaza are able to look at the difficulty in front of their situation, in front of their face and say it's all good because Alhamdulillah we are empowered through our faith. I just returned from a trip in Jordan with Helping Hands, a relief org where for three days we went to visit orphans, Palestinian orphans and Syrian refugees who have been displaced since 2011, since the war began. And when you go to these tents where these people don't have the bare necessities that we consider to be the norms of life, restrooms and water is a luxury that they count for and they count for as a blessing. And when you go to them and you speak to them, the power of Iman that you're able to learn from them is far more than any book that I have read. Ibn Hajj rahimahullah comments that Abdullah ibn Abbas عنه, used to say, one of my teachers used to quote, that if you want to learn how to be generous, don't read about generosity. Be with people who are generous. If we wish to learn how to be humble, put the book down and find people who are truly humble. So we can learn what humility looks like. Similarly, they would say, if you want to learn about what Iman is, reading the books gives us a theory, but spend time with those who have truly been tested and their faith is still upright. And these families will respond as if there's nothing that is missing in their life because feeling empowered is an honor that they still have in their life, which is through faith. Where Musa alayhi salam is being cornered along the sea and the, and the army of the Pharaoh behind him. The entire army of Fir'aun behind and the sea in front. And from both sides, there is nothing but destruction. There is no pathway out. There is no strategy. There is no plan in place. And the people around Musa alayhi salam, Bani Israel, who happened to simply believe when it was convenient. Believing and obeying and submitting to Allah when it's only convenient is a part of our faith. But the completion of faith how the Prophet of Allah taught us is when we submit when it's still difficult. When we comply to the command even though it may challenge the norms that we're used to. It may challenge the preferences that we have. That is submission. Like Ibrahim salam, who is a father of submission was given this title not because he stood up for Salat when he found it to be easy. But rather he was the father of submission because he was challenged to comply to a command of Allah in the most abnormal way which was to put a knife on the neck of his son submission is found where it's not convenient where it's convenient is what Bani Israel would do Bani Israel looks at Musa alayhi salam and they say hey inna lamudrakun this promised land that you would speak about you would speak that Islam is the most powerful religion. You would say that Muslims will always stand tall. You will say that we will find a way out. Why should I still claim these statements if I haven't seen the outcome of it? Is what Bani Israel said. Is what we say today. But Musa alayhi salam understood that empowerment is something that comes based on what I value. And what I value is Allah. And his response was simply based on that. Kalla. There is no way that I will be destroyed. There is no way that Allah will destroy us. Not because I have a plan. Not because I have a strategy that I'll tell you what's going to happen. But for me as a believer, it's more important for me to know that who is with me, than how am I going to get out of this situation. The how is less important for a believer than the who. He responds by saying, Kalla inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah is with me. Allah is with me. And because He is with me, sayahdeen, the presence of Allah is inseparable from guidance. And the presence of Allah is inseparable from support in Nusra. 
The challenge becomes that should I focus on the process or should I focus on the command? The command of Allah at times may come against the process that we're used to. When the Prophet of Allah was stuck in this cave with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in Ghar thawr during the migration and as he's challenged for three days to be in a cave the yes, Iman does come with his challenges but that doesn't go against the fact that I'm empowered. That doesn't remove the presence that I have with my faith because feeling empowered is not challenged as long as my greatest asset has not been taken from me. And my greatest asset is Iman. And because I still possess that Iman, people stares and glares in their remarks and comments. They may harm my dunya, but they don't harm the most coveted asset that every human being will search for on the day of judgment. And I still have that. Was when Prophet of Allah is struggling, the greatest man the world has seen is seeking shelter in a cave for three days. If that means sometimes my saying salamu alaykum to someone may make others feel uncomfortable, then that's a part of the package of being a believer. That I'm proud to say the statements of the Prophet of Allah. If I choose to walk a certain way and dress a certain way and say the words that the Prophet has taught me as supplications, that's a part of me embodying the fact that I feel empowered. That the social norms around me, though they're important to uphold, don't dictate my decisions. They simply supplement my decisions. I will only be dictated by that which empowers me. And that is Iman. In this situation, Abu Bakr anhu, while sitting in this cave, he looks up and he sees that the enemies in the mushrikeen of Mecca have reached the cave. The entirety of Mecca is looking for the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr an, And they find the Prophet and they're standing on top of the cave and Abu Bakr anhu says in a quivering voice Ya Rasulullah لَوْ نَظَرَ تَحْتَ قَدَمَيْهِ لَأَبَصَرَنَا If they simply look down beneath them if they just turn their heads to look down they will see us here and we're going to be dead we're, 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 we're stuck and the Prophet of Allah responds in a similar manner as Musa alayhi salam responded, saying, it's not about the how, it's about who is with me. لا تحزن إن الله معنا Don't grieve, don't feel anxiety, though that is the norm of life. أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون The challenges are the default, and the moments of ease are the concessions. But even in those challenges, the Prophet of Allah tells Abu Bakr anhu, Inna Allah ma'ana. We are empowered. We feel the strength of Allah with us. And the beautiful story that takes place that Allah narrates in the Quran, where in the time of Musa alayhi salam, as Fir'aun and his people attempted to kill Musa, they started plotting against him and plotting to kill him. And a man who was hiding his iman, Allah speaks about him and he says, وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ An ordinary man of faith spoke up. We believe that empowerment must be synonymous to recognition. That I shall only speak up because I have the title to speak up. Or I shall only do something because I will be recognized for it. Whereas in our beautiful tradition, empowerment has nothing to do with appreciation or recognition. Empowerment has to do with the fact that Allah has given us the ability. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها As long as I am able, I am empowered. And the more empowerment Allah has given us, the more liability Allah has given us. Those who have more wealth are more liable. Those who have more time are more liable. Those who have more children are liable. Wherever Allah has given us more blessings, he has given us a higher sense of liability as is the structure of the corporate world as well. The more autonomy, the more liability. The less autonomy, the less liability. This man who is an ordinary person, who's not a prophet, who's not a companion, he's someone from the family of the Pharaoh. So he has a lot to lose. A lot of times we think that those people are speaking up because they have nothing to lose. They're, I mean, they're just, they're just youngsters, or they're just scholars, or they're just this. They have such 
they have nothing to lose, so it's easy for them to go for Fajr. They have nothing to lose, so it's easy for them to post something about the genocide in Gaza. Because they have nothing to lose. That is not true. Everyone has something to lose. But they've defined that they've defined that the loss that they will incur in this world is worth the gain of the Akhirah. And that decision is made for us on a daily basis. Either by the world or we make it ourselves. Where the Prophet of Allah says that every single morning, Kullu nafsin, every morning we are either making this decision for ourselves or the world around us is making this decision for us. This ordinary man stands up from the palace of the Pharaoh, from the family, the royal family. He stands up and he says, Hey, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ are you attempting to kill a man who simply claims that Allah is one? There is nothing abnormal about his claim. There is nothing irrational about his claim. If he is lying, then he is lying. And if he is telling the truth, if you, if you accept, you'll benefit from it. Why are you attempting to kill a man who says Allah is one. In the books of Tafsir, they speak about what gave this man such willpower, such willpower, such strength, that standing in front of the, the Pharaoh who has slaughtered thousands of kids, and he has seen the Pharaoh kill and hang the magicians that believe in Musa, he's seen all of this. The scenes of oppression and tyranny have taken place in front of his eyes and yet standing there with so much to lose in dunya and such less to gain in dunya he's looking at this man dead in his eyes and he's saying why are you killing this guy for what empowered this man and they respond Abdullah ibn Abbas says the quality that gave this person the strength to be able enough to stand in such a situation was qala rajulul mu'min the fact that he had iman when your brothers and sisters iman is the greatest source of empowerment the prophet of allah would speak and he would recite this beautiful dua allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-'ajzi wal kasr oh allah i seek refuge from feeling incapable the feeling of incapability is directly linked to the strength of a person's faith where at times a person feels incapable to pray and it has to do with the strength of their faith. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the munafiqoon of Medina. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَةً They would stand both only the goal of showing off to people and with a lazy form just so they could have a tick box. We're taught to do everything with a tick box in this world. But for the akhirah, the reality is the tick box doesn't make a difference. It's a depth box. If there's no sincerity behind it, if there's no intentionality behind it, the tick means nothing. Because the ultimate goal of reward is only found by those who are sincere. إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ And this sense of empowerment, and this sense of self-worth, and this sense of dignity remains limited to, for us in our tradition, through our faith in Iman. And where a person's faith dwindles, their sense of empowerment also diminishes. Hence, it was a rule for him that in his army, and the people that were in his army, he would make sure that there was nobody who missed their five times prayer. Because he would say that missing one's prayer is a cause of becoming incapable, or feeling incapable. Where faith and strength, and faith and courage and good deeds and ability of everything in life was intertwined. It was all cyclical. It wasn't that my prayer can only benefit my akhirah. It was also that my prayer can give me the strength to speak in front of an oppressor when he or she is oppressing. The ultimate goal of life is to never feel helpless when our name is called upon. The ultimate goal of life is to never feel powerless when our name is called upon. And when our name is called upon, we will never feel helpless as long as the greatest factor of empowerment still remains upright within our hearts. 
and that is Iman. Ala inna kalimat Allahi hiya al-uliya. That the power of faith is such that it will always keep a believer afloat. And it will never let the believer drown because they have Iman in their heart. Just like how the families and the children of Gaza, the orphans that I met in Jordan, just like how all these youngsters who are struggling in the world, but yet have their dignity and power that is completely alive and afloat. And they're able to respond like how Bilal responded by saying, Ahad, that has nothing to do with their space. It has everything to do with their state. May Allah allow our hearts to be in a state of submission. Allow our hearts to be in a state of faith. Let us be those who, digni who identify that our empowerment and our sense of being and our sense of belonging and for our children comes not simply from their education and the scores that they have in school, but rather from the way that they pray their Fajr Salat. May Allah make us amongst these people so we can see an ummah that continues to rise and never an ummah that is failing in front of our eyes. May Allah make us amongst these people and support those who are